Welcome back. On Saturday, the long-anticipated Washington Post profile on LSU head coach Kim Mulkey was published. The piece was a retrospective of Mulkey's career and included no new revelations. Bill Mulkey described it as a hit piece in a statement she made last week anticipating its publication. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles Times released a column which came out on Friday that portrayed LSU's matchup against UCLA as a reckoning between good versus evil with Mulkey calling it sexist, awful, and wrong. The Times apologized and revised the article. Here's Mulkey addressing the LA Times piece. You can criticize coaches all you want. That's our business. You can come at us and say you're the worst coach in America. I hate you. I hate everything about you. We expect that. It comes with the territory. But the one thing I'm not going to let you do, I'm not going to let you attack young people. It was so sexist, and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. All right, Shannon, I'm gonna start with you. What is your reaction to all of this? I agree. I, I've been on record. I'm not the biggest fan of Kim Mulkey, but she's absolutely right in this situation. It's sad because, as she mentioned, these are 18 to 21 year old. These are college young ladies, and you think of them as dirty debutantes. Google it. I, I wish they had done what she had asked them to do and see what it takes you to. Now I understand. I'm from the South, so I understand what a debutante ball is. Uh, there were what it is. Stephen A. S. The young lady is supposed to be a wim going into adulthood. And so yeah. they get all dressed up and they, they put on their nice fancy gowns and off to they go. And you say dirty debutantes? And then you say the others are milk and cookies? Yeah. Really? That, formal, I mean, entrance. That's... formal entrance into society. That's the way yes. they label it. Debut. Yeah, yeah, really? Really? I mean, come on now. Is that is that where we are now? If you're gonna say the one program is but to to take it to this point, because we we see what it is. Sex is there's a, a, a I am not gonna even say a tinge. Because when you say one team is dirty and the other team is milk and cookie, really? Villains? When did when, It's almost like, Stephen, I know you remember when they had Miami play Notre Dame and it yes. was the Catholics versus the convicts. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we see where this is headed. What, what did you hope to get out of that? And, Stephen, it was so bad they had to do some retractions. Yeah. But it had already it had already been printed, so you right. can't pull back what somebody has already read. It's kind of like when I'm in a courtroom, Stephen. That we're in a courtroom, and I said something, and you object. I object, Your Honor, and the Honor says objection sustained. Mm -hmm. How do I make the jury unhear what I heard? What they heard? Right. How do you make people uh, unread what they've already read? You've already called them the dirty debutantes. You've already said these inflammatory, sexist things about them, and for that. Stephen, you can you know more about this. You were in the journalism, uh, you were in the newspaper yeah. business. I'm assuming that when you write a column, it has to go to the editor. Yes. So the editor had to have signed off on this, and is he an now go is ahead. An editor's desk, it's copy yes. editors and editor's desk. It goes through like two or three layers before it goes to print. That is true. So and or now and you gonna come out and say it didn't meet the standard. When? After the fact, Stephen, they just told me it goes to two or three levels. So it met the standard enough to get out one time, and then you get the backlash, and you hear what comes from what you wrote or what you allowed to. Now you said it didn't meet the editorial standards, and we're gonna have, you're going to uh, have a retraction to some of it. It's too late. Kim Mulkey is exactly correct. This thing should have never been written. I don't really know what you hope to gain by saying talking about 18 to 21-year-old young ladies in this capacity. I don't get what they got out of this, but it was totally wrong, and she's absolutely right. Kim Mulkey was absolutely right, and <clears throat> she was right to point it out. She was right to point out what it was in terms of the sexism that uh, was, it was displayed, uh, and she was also right to challenge the media in attendance to pull out their phones and mm -hmm. look up deputantes and, and, and what that means and what was trying to be implied here. Here's what I would tell you, Shannon, when it comes to the newspaper industry and what the Los Angeles Times should have done. 
there is always a boss. There is always a leader in everything mm -hmm. that we do. Put Shannon up on the screen so I can see him, please. There's always that. What happens is whoever had the power to say, quote, it did not meet the Times editorial standards should have went a step further and apologized and said on behalf of this paper, that is not our standard. That was never supposed to be in print. It is something that we will address. We apologize and we will make sure it does not happen again. Very, very simple. They didn't right. go that far. They just stopped there and that's where the mistake was. What happens is, is that as damaging and as bad as this, as this was, it would have been significantly worse if it came from a neutral publication or a right. national publication. If the USA right. Today or somebody like that did it, it would, it would resonate even further. Here's the reason why. The Los Angeles Times, you know who they're rooting for. Yeah, the home paper. Right. Of course. So you, yeah, you, you root for the home paper. You see what I'm saying? And so if you get an opportunity to paint somebody as the villain while you're, you know, you're pristine and you're like the dove flying yeah. in the sky and, you know, <laughs> nothing blemishes you, you can understand what their intent was, but they went too damn far. Right. And they made right. that mistake. Had it been yeah. a national publication... All right, or somebody that was neutral, if this was some paper in New York or wherever that decided to write that, it would have been far, far more damaging because where's the homerism there? There's no excuse for you to be favoring one over the other in any kind of fashion. Right. But in the Los Angeles Times, that's the only thing that they have to lean on with this mistake. Getting to Moki, let's understand something about Moki here because she's made news over the last week and a half, two weeks, for several reasons, okay? Calling out the Washington Post before the article came out and all of this other stuff, and it turned out to just be, you know, a regurgitation of some of the things we already knew, her relationship knew. with Brittany right. Griner and right. all of this other stuff. It ain't the greatest look in the world, but it was no surprise. Right. In the end, Kim Mulkey has been coaching in college basketball for 24 years. She's a four-time champion. She's a three-time coach of the year. Do you know that she's never had a season where she's, lost, she's, she's won less than 20 games? Every single year of her career, she's won more than 20 games. So there's no questioning her about uh, her coaching acumen. Right. Only Pat oh, yeah, Simmons or Emma has been, she's elite. So what do you get to? You get to the personal. And here's where the personal lies. The personal lies in her relationship with players, how it's perceived she has treated some of her players, particularly her off-putting personality or, or approach or whatever word you want to use to their quote-unquote sexuality. This is according to a book Brittany Griner wrote, according to excerpts, according to things that have been discussed. In the end, her turning around and being defensive for on behalf of her players, people will look at her and say, well, at least you're doing that these days. Because clearly there were times in the past where you, we wish you would have, right. and you right. didn't. right. You love she loved she loved the players, but not the players' lifestyle. Right. And so that's what that's what seemingly annoyed her or what she tried to shy away from or ask Brittany to suppress. Don't be so outwardly or so open about it when she was around campus. But that's who Brittany Griner chose to live her life as. Right. And so I agree with you, Stephen A. At least she did come to the defense of her players in this situation, mm -hmm. and it was rightfully so. It's not quite to the level of what Dom Iman said, Stephen A., I know you remember what right. he said. That's right. It's not that, it, but there were the implications are there when right. you refer to them because the majority of LSU players are African Americans, black, right. mm -hmm. and UCLA is is seen as lily white, pristine, the milk and cookies, the wholesome while these are de dirty debutantes. But like I said, people at home, if you didn't get an opportunity, Google and see what comes up on your Google when you Google that word. Yeah, and now we, we got to look at it for what it is. And yeah. again, but also Kim Mulkey needs to be, th th there's a learning lesson in all of this as well. As she continues to excoriate what the Los Angeles Times did, what the Washington Post did, it does call upon her to look in the mirror because we still got questions as to how she treated Angel Reese at the beginning of this season. Right. And what mm -hmm. was that all about? 
We know right. about the whole Brittany Griner thing because Brittany Griner told us. There's a there's a few incidences where, and Shannon has pointed to the weeks ago when you went off about Kim Mulkey, where she gives you cause to pause because of her dismissiveness when Brittany Griner was stuck in Russia, right. and we didn't know whether she was going to be able to get you know you get get out of there, okay? And right. you you were you had hope for an elevated level of sensitivity mm -hmm. from Kim Mulkey that she did not give you, and then to come out and say, well, you know what? They got this article that's coming out about me, and they only gave us a couple of days to respond when you. You know they had been chasing you for two years, two years to interview you. That doesn't make much sense. But in the end, the Los Angeles Times has helped her this week because they were clearly wrong in what mm -hmm. they did. And the focus being on that sort of limits the level of attention right. you're throwing in Kim Mulkey's direction for a plethora of other reasons. So we can't ignore that either. I do want to say, uh, Stephen A., the point about it being in LA, the LA Times specifically is a really good point, but I do think that this article specifically highlights a lot of the issues that women have dealt with yeah. in the sporting space and athletics sure. in general. So um, definitely a lot to learn there with this situation. Um, we'll see what happens yeah. moving forward. And not absolving the Los Angeles Times right, in any course. way. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, just no. saying all of us would receive it a uh, even more fiercely right. had it come from a neutral right, exactly. publication. Yeah. yeah. LA ain't neutral when it comes to UCLA, USC, <laughs> etc. For sure. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Right.